Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In today's Math Mondays, ooh, I'm so excited! We're gonna explore math in making. Yes! So, this topic comes from my rad friend Diana, who asked me, How many LEDs can I control with a microcontroller? Great question. So, I also love that it's related to the topic we just finished electrodynamics. Yay! Theory and practice. All right. So let's start with a slightly easier question and then use that to answer the microcontroller question. So let's start with the battery. How many LEDs can a single coin cell battery power? And a related question, which we'll figure out why in a sec, for how long? Okay, cool. So I love teaching this because we get to read and apply some of the things that we have learned. So if you have a coin cell battery handy, or honestly any battery handy, grab it and start to read the information that is on the battery. So for example, on this little coin cell battery here, that's very blurry. I'm just gonna read it to you. There is some information on the front or the top or the positive side, however you wanna call it. Um, it's like a coin, what size is the top? I don't know. So there's a plus sign on the, on the top positive side. Underneath that is a part number. Um, so, uh, I'll put this up here. CR2032. So that is the specific type of coin cell battery that I have. And so if I want more information about it, I would search for its data sheet. Yay! In my favorite search engine. So, before we do that, let's see what other information. There is, uh, I want to say, some different language on here. I'm not even going to guess at that. Underneath that, it says lithium battery. And then underneath that, it says three volts. Okay, so the forward voltage or the voltage that the LEDs need uh, to power on is around three volts. So we know that this works well. We also know that we can get away without a resistor, although it is always recommended to use a resistor because, uh, well, we'll get into that later. Um, but we do know that we can safely power the LED without a resistor, without burning out the LED, or has happened to me before, exploding it. Fun. Um, not usually what you want when you're trying to turn on lights. So, okay, so this is the first piece of information. And when you search uh, CR2032 data sheet in your favorite search engine, you want to look for what is called the battery capacity. For this particular coin cell, it's 1000 milliamp hours. So the battery capacity is how much electrical current the battery can provide over time. We need one more piece of information, um, which is about our LED. Um, so let's specify and say that we're going to use a five millimeter blue LED. Ooh. Um, so again, you would search for this uh, plus the data sheet. Yay, data sheets. And you would look for the maximum current draw that the LED is going to have which is about 20 milliamps for um, all the colors I looked at. Um, so note that this is the maximum current draw on average. Uh, typically, we're going to see something around 5 milliamps, um, well, 5 to five to 20, I should say. Um, and this is really why you want to add a resistor, because if you don't add a resistor, it's going to suck all the energy that it can. Um, if you add a resistor, it might be a little bit less bright, probably won't notice, um, but our battery will definitely notice. Okay, but for engineering and design purposes, let's go with the maximum current draw because we want to design a safe circuit. So, um, if my battery, sorry, wow, if my LED draws 20 milliamps of current and my battery can provide 1000 milliamps per hour, how many LEDs can I power? What do you think? What do we do? Division! Yay! So we divide a thousand milliamp hours by 20 
milliamps. And we get 50. 50 what? This is the real world here. We gotta have units. Well, the milliamps cancel and we're left with uh, 50 hours. So there's two ways to interpret this. Okay, so either we can power 50 LEDs for one hour or one LED for 50 hours. Woo! Um, and this is about uh, 2.083 days. Um, I like how we say about, and then I give you three decimal points, 2.083 approximately. Um, so <laughs> one coin cell can power 50 LEDs for one hour, about, or one LED for a little over two days. Now, again, note, this is the theory, and reality is way more complex than the theory. Um, your LED is probably not gonna draw 20 milliamps. Also, if you have a circuit, aka you've got some wires in there, the wires are gonna consume some of the energy from the battery as well. Um, so all in all, uh, this is a reasonable approximation. Um, cool. And then we say, yay, I can attach a magnet to this, throw it somewhere, and it will be lit up for a little bit over two days. Super fun. So, what about a microcontroller? How many LEDs can our microcontroller power? This is a little bit more complicated, which is why I wanted to start with the battery. So, um, we are going to need to keep our LED data. So, I'm going to write it in the corner. Um, so, uh, let's be specific here. So, blue, 5 millimeter blue. LED, aha, uh -huh. um, da, 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 20 milliamps, and in parentheses we'll do 5 milliamps to 20 milliamps, all right, cool, 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 and then we have more space for the microcontroller information, okay, so there are um, two things that we need to keep in mind when we're working with microcontrollers, one is the current output per pin, and the second is the total current output for all of the pins. So uh, I'm going to pick on Arduino because, woo, Arduino. Um, and to be fair, well, yeah, anyway, okay. Um, we'll say this is an Arduino Uno. So the per pin current limit uh, per pin is... Uh, do I remember? I'm pretty sure it's 40. Pretty sure it's 40. Let me double check. Yeah, 40 milliamps. And a total, so all pins, is 200 milliamps. Okay, so this means we can either um, control two LEDs per pin, or, well, I guess I should say that, well, okay, so we'll, we'll do the math here. Sorry, I did it in my head. So 40 milliamps divided by 20. This is the Arduino. Uh, 20 milliamps. This is the LED. Is two. Um, so either two LEDs per pin. I keep wanting to write the E first. I get so excited that it has all these lines. Two LEDs per pin. Um, or uh, 200 milliamps total. So 200 milliamps divided by 20 milliamps is 10 LEDs total. Okay, this is without resistors um, and assuming the kind of uh, max expected current draw per LED. So in reality, our LEDs are not going to be consuming this much current. Um, but it is really important to know the safety limits. Um, and so if we add a resistor, we can drop the current consumed by the LEDs down to around 10 or even five. Um, so with resistor, um, and if you had a specific value of resistor, you would use Ohm's law here, but we're just, I just want to kind of give you a general overview and not 
dig too much into the weeds yet. Um, so with a resistor, let's say that we have 10 milliamps per LED. So then 200 milliamps divided by 10 milliamps is 20 LEDs. Yay! So cool. This is fun. What if you want to power way more than this? What if you want to power like 200 LEDs? You probably would be okay if you went to 25, maybe 30, but if you get an order of magnitude larger, like 200, then you're going to start asking, uh, what else do I do here? And the answer is, well, use an external power source. That's it. Um, you can use a battery pack or you can use a dedicated power supply and then you use the microcontroller to act as a switch. Um, I've used transistors as a go-between for this. Um, so basically the Arduino sends a signal to the transistor. The transistor acts as an amplifier in this case and it switches um, on the power supply for the LEDs. If you're dealing with higher voltages and currents, um, you can use a relay. Uh, those are kind of the two most common, uh, the things that I have worked with personally. Um, yeah, so there's lots of options. Super fun. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to grab my fun little LED. Yay, <laughs> okay. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, we can get into the application of Ohm's Law a bit later. But let's just, I like starting simple and building up a base foundation. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting used to reading data sheets. Don't worry if you look at them and you're like, ah, there's a lot of information on there. Just to start to see what information you can pick out that's relevant. Look for current limits, look for voltage, um, operating voltage, that type of stuff. Um, and yeah, just focus on the things that you're familiar with and you'll learn what the other things are with time. Okay, thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time, friends. Bye!